Kikuo, in my opinion, is one of the greatest producers to ever pick up Vocaloid, and I would say a large part of that is because of the instrumentals he creates and produces. He's easily up there with Giga P in terms of talent. But unlike Giga P, Kikuo, in my opinion, has always been strangely overlooked. Despite the success of tracks like Love Me, Love Me, Love Me, You Are a Useless Child, and Don't Look at Me in That Way, I have never seen a single Kikuo song appear in a Project Diva game, or even at a concert, despite the number of years he's been doing this and the cult following he has. But today I want to try to change that. Recently Kikuo 06 was released, and I want to talk about why it's not only one of my favorite albums of this year, but why I think it's the best album of his whole career. I stated that I think Kikuo makes some of the best instrumentals in the community, and a large reason for that is the wide range of instruments he uses. I'm not talking about putting less common conventional instruments in your pieces like the bongos or drums like 40MP, I'm talking on a global scale. Throughout this album you'll hear everything from the recorder like it's your third grade music class, to the gamelan, an instrument traditionally used in Indonesian culture consisting of a variety of gongs, metallophones, and drums. But what impresses me the most about it is how he can take these instruments that are not traditionally used together and make them blend so well like combining castanets with an accordion on the cast dining table and making it sound completely natural. He's truly not an artist afraid to experiment even when he first started, which is such an incredibly risky move, because experimental music is not always well received by a large audience. But Kikuo has never been what you would call a shy artist. He's bold and confident in the work that he makes, and I think that's why people love him so much. And Kikuo 6 is no exception to this. The album's by far one of the most experimental yet, not only in production, which I'll get into later, but in subject matter as well. One thing that I noticed is that this album had an odd fixation on children. Children in the rain, dead children at a dinner table. The word child or the concept of childhood and education show up in almost every track on this album. And according to Kikuo, this was not actually attended, but was completely natural. He grew up observing the mood of children around him when he was in elementary school. What do other kids make to entertain themselves? What kind of manga do they draw, etc. That kind of attitude apparently naturally infiltrated his work for the past six years, which he believes was caused by trauma. And it's clearly reflected in the themes that are front and center on this album. Death of innocence, bullying, self-hatred, all very dark and serious concepts about childhood that we do see appear in coming of age stories in movies and literature, but very rarely do we see them combined in music. Typically you either get one or the other. So it makes the concepts of the songs on Kikuo Miku 6 refreshing but also terrifying. XXX Cat closely focuses on the humiliation and ridicule that comes from being alone as a child. But going even a step further, it focuses on the self-hatred that comes with it. Often we like to look at bullying as a cause and effect. This person did this which eventually led to that. But very rarely do we try to look into the mental state of the victim that led them to make that decision. Not only just in music but in media in general. Blaming yourself for the inability to not be liked by others and having the desire to crush your body parts as punishment? Wanting to wash away the germs from the scratches on your brain because you want to forget the pain you're feeling? Is a genuinely heartbreaking and unapologetically raw song. Tunnel Avenger is a disorienting look on childhood regrets. The track focuses on being constantly haunted with your choices in life and being tied down to a path in life you hate. Obsessing on bringing back a version of yourself that still had dreams or aspirations. It's something we all encounter in life. No one lives without any regrets. But this is almost to the point of being unsettling. The constant switch between first and third person throughout the track is very confusing, but it's also a brilliant way of showing a disconnect with reality. A key point of growing up and becoming a healthy adult is learning to accept everything about ourselves, both the good and the bad, because it's a key point of learning to love yourself, because no one's perfect. But here the you who is at nowhere is not even being considered as part of ourselves anymore. Instead, the focus is on destroying that you at all costs, without learning the mistakes from it. To the point when the tunnel collapses and we're free to choose a path in life, instead of living a life with direction, we accidentally throw the things we value the most down the fault because we have no idea who we are and what we value. What makes Kikuo's new album so oppressive is his ability to essentially communicate to his audience using the bare minimum in information. Not necessarily just in his lyrics, but in direction as well. Take Memories of the Rainy Summer Day for example. Compared to the rest of the tracks on this album, it's weirdly upbeat both in terms of tone and sound. On the music video though, I noticed that the child highly resembles a Terotero Bonzu, which is essentially a talisman used by Japanese children to ward off rain. 
You can make them by taking newspaper and wrapping cloth around it and using a string to keep them in place. I actually made a couple a few months ago for one of my clubs. You hang the head up to ward off rain and then you hang it down to bring it. Now, if these little guys creep you out, you're not alone. In fact, there's a lot of Japanese people out there who will agree with you. The translators for this song, I'll put their names up on the screen, brought up an interesting point about how the meter of this song lines up with the lyrics of the traditional Tero Tero Bolzu song. And that's likely why the lyrics have a simple repeated melody, so you can sing the lyrics on top of it. I personally thought it was a bit of a stretch, but here, take a lesson. I actually already knew this song from my classes and clubs in college, and I remember the oddly dark lyrics towards the end of the song, essentially decapitating the poor thing in the rain that didn't stop like it should. No one knows for sure what the origin of the tradition is, but I started looking into the theories about it, and it's surprisingly dark. The most commonly cited story among the Japanese is a story about a monk who was supposed to bring nice weather using an incantation for a feudal lord. But when he couldn't keep his promise, his head was ultimately chopped off as punishment. The head was then wrapped in cloth and hung outside to stop the rain and bring out the sun. That, I know, doesn't make that much sense, but when you go back and re-listen to the song, it paints a completely different picture than what you saw before. The happy nature of the song is mysterious and unsettling, in a way that I find creepier than when a piece of art tries to purposely scare me. There's something that terrifies me when something or someone tries to pretend that everything is perfectly fine but you know something is off. Maybe that's what makes Cotton Candy such a frightening track as well. It takes the concept of something we associate with being sweet and joyful, and turns it into something so ominous. This sweet object being forcefully packed into our heads while the world completely falls apart, the eerie happy distorted vocals, the track constantly moving forward and backwards, the subtle whispers in the background, and that's the power of Kikuo's music, the atmosphere he's able to create. A lot of artists believe that a jump scare or tons of blood and gore is what you need to make something scary, but in reality, it's really not. It's your ability to absorb your audience into the piece that you're making. Your ability to convince your audience that they're part of what's happening. But let's take lyrics out of the equation this time. Because what makes or breaks a great producer is their ability to convey a certain emotion or message, whether the audience can understand what's being said or not. When I listen to Hole Dwelling, it amazes me how much it feels like I'm falling down an actual hole. The purposeful use of descending scales, the way the sabi shi trails off towards the end of the verse, it's all carefully orchestrated to create this illusion that you're actually falling. The drums and the strings are balanced in a way during the verses that almost makes you feel like you're being oppressed by the walls, that suddenly open up into an open free fall during the chorus. And surely enough, if you look at the lyrics, they actually accurately portray that sensation, and I think that's incredible. The key to what makes Kikuo Miku 6 and Kikuo in general so incredible is this balance of contrast and tones. Almost every one of these tracks contrasts itself in some way to create this picture that there's more going on than what appears on the surface. Cotton Candy paints this happy picture, but its production is disturbing, while Histrionic has an upbeat waltz-like sound despite its depressing lyrics. Kikuo never wants to tell you exactly what is happening or what he's trying to say, but he'll give you enough information to let your imagination run wild. And I think that's what makes a great album. The artist leaves you with some sort of incentive to come back to listen to the project again. A great project isn't one you listen to on the week it comes out. As Kendrick Lamar puts it, you're not trying to make a concept that the audience can grasp in one day. Because you wanted to. Live forever. You dig what I'm saying? Thanks for watching.